Uh, I'm just going to start very quickly. There's quite a lot to get through in this presentation, and I won't be able to cover all of the technical elements, but I'm around um, during the day for anyone who wants to follow up. Uh, I really want to talk about a, really, a strange, um, ambitious uh, idea um, of using the blockchain to send financial value um, to wild animals which are threatened with uh, extinction. And uh, I use, just uh, to start with, th this example of a giraffe. And you can imagine if the animal actually owns uh, a digital wallet and that wallet is full, um, the ranger, the ranger's family, the local community, uh, the government itself, uh, are all potentially incentivized to mine the value of that animal in, 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 in order to uh, improve uh, its life quality and, and, and critically to raise the number of uh, endangered animals in the wild. And why are we doing this? Um, some of you will have seen this picture. This is from uh, Kenya. This is uh, Sudan. He was the, the last uh, living northern white rhino. And he died a couple of months ago. So that species is dead now. It's gone from the planet. And, it, and it, it's unlikely that we will find a way to return it. Um, I really want to just emphasize some simple points about biodiversity uh, because it's really important to get a scale, a sense of scale about what's happening at the moment. Um, first point is the most obvious point that we as a collective, as a species, uh, have massively failed so far uh, to uh, be good stewards of the planet which we have. Um, we, we have at the moment the, the sixth mass extinction event happening on the planet. Um, we can see uh, in Africa uh, the numbers are actually higher, but on the planetary basis uh, we've lost 60% of large animals on the planet. Uh, in Africa, it, it runs up to 80% in many areas. And obviously, the large animals are important only because they're an indicator of what is happening underneath them. So when, when you lose a giraffe, you're also probably losing the ecosystem underpinning it, and that includes plants, includes insects, includes soil, um, and, and this is a critical uh, problem which is only going to get worse. Um, and I was thinking about this problem for a long time, and uh, it, it seemed to me that one novel approach is offered by the blockchain. Uh, uh, an animal doesn't have any value to offer in and of itself, unless it's an elephant or a rhino, in which case the value it has to offer is, is the reason why it's destroyed. And so uh, I feel that, that giving the animals financial value, it maybe uh, empowers them and gives them some agency in the world that they would not otherwise have. Um, and just this point, uh, which uh, uh, in the Ministry of Science and Technology, I think you're all very aware of it, uh, you won't be able to see all of the detail in the charts, but you'll all see the uptick. So on, on the left-hand side, we have the socioeconomic trends. So what is happening to human population what is happening to GDP, and on the right-hand side, what is happening to our planet uh, in, in terms of the pressure on the planet. And when we think about Ethiopia, the critical point I want to make is that Ethiopia is going to double its population and try to become a middle-income country at this point in all of these graphs. So the pressure on Ethiopia is quite uh, staggering. Um, we, we can talk about climate change, we can talk about degradation of living systems, we can talk about the, the rising cost of uh, food and materials. Um, the pressure uh, uh, which Ethiopia will uh, come under during its transition is quite significant. Um, in terms of biodiversity, most of my work is in very advanced technology in the tropical belt of the planet. So I'm very much interested in this belt of the planet. 
and you'll see uh, this the red indicates population growth, and, and these rings indicate areas of very high biodiversity. And you'll see that in Europe and in North America, that the more north you go, the less biodiversity there is. So we're in a situation now in this tropical belt, and particularly here in Africa, where uh, human population is growing, continuing to grow very fast, and the uh, and the, the, the biodiversity which is contained there is of planetary importance. And is not properly valued by the planet itself, um, which is a critical point. Um, if we just speak specifically about Ethiopia, uh, most Ethiopians in the room will know about the Simeon Mountains and the Bali Mountains. And in terms of botanical uh, plant life, they are very, very rich. Um, but in the area that I'm most interested in in Ethiopia, a little bit up here on the border with Eritrea and Sudan, um, but mainly it's this region bordering South Sudan and, and, and Northern Kenya, where we have an extremely rich biodiversity which has survived. Uh, and what we'd like to see is to try and trial this project, maybe in Gambella here, maybe down in Omo here, uh, and obviously, there are a lot of operational challenges, uh, but we think it, it's a really good uh, possibility. Um, and the, the obvious point to make from an Ethiopian government perspective is Ethiopia is committed to a green economy future. So when you think about this project, think of it in, in a 50-year, 80-year cycle. So what would that your great-grandchildren want to inherit in Ethiopia? Do they want to inherit uh, an ecosystem which is biodiverse and rich and alive? Um, just the numbers, the lion uh, is the symbol of Ethiopia. You know? This is the great symbol of uh, Ethiopian civilization. There's about 900 to 1,000 lions left in the wild in Ethiopia. And in, in uh, 1970, there were probably uh, as much as 10,000 lions here. Um, uh, so we've seen a complete collapse in those animals. The same with uh, giraffes, and we can talk about all other species. Uh, but in particular, with this project, we're really interested in, in giving digital wallets to these uh, large animals and seeing what happens and whether that helps the local community to protect them. Um, I, I think the, the most essential point uh, about this Linnaeus project is the idea that you use the planetary capital uh, and direct it towards a small number of creatures for uh, maximum uh, effect. Um, we often talk about wild animals uh, as being priceless, uh, but the, the opportunity for them to actually have uh, value and to spend that value is something that the blockchain uh, can can uh, provide. And I, I'm using the word, I haven't really thought of the right word here. I'm hoping that the minister will come up with a good verb uh, to blockchain. Uh, but the, the idea is um, very simply that if the local community understands that an animal has a large amount of value attached to it, and if they understand that they can change their behavior and be rewarded for that behavior, in incremental financial payments, then maybe uh, that will have a positive effect on, on, on the ground. Um, we named this project uh, after uh, Linnaeus. Uh, obviously, we're here in the Ministry of Science, so many of you will know him. But those who don't, uh, Linnaeus was a 18th century Swedish taxonomist. Uh, uh, and he really. Uh, left a legacy which we still have today of species and subspecies and 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 the idea uh, with this project is that we build on his legacy by directing value towards these um, uh, species. Um, <clears throat> we don't have time to get into all of the details, but I think the 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 main idea ar around Linnaeus and the concept is develop. Uh, as it were, a sovereign wealth fund for life forms. Um, 
uh, and the, the capital flow will come into Linnaeus, but it will be highly targeted towards endangered cre creatures. And uh, we have uh, uh, a very good uh, scientific underpinning on which animals are the most endangered in which places. And in the early stage, we'll direct the digital wallets towards those uh, creatures uh, and, and, and see uh, if that can have a positive effect. The, what attracted me most towards uh, Cardano and Charles uh, and more largely into the blockchain uh, community is this idea of smart contracts. The idea is that if you were actually to physically go and negotiate a financial transaction with a local community, for example, not putting their cattle into an area where uh, lions are, um, uh, that would be really prohibitively expensive. But it's possible to architect and to write smart contracts which are quite sophisticated uh, and they, they change according to time and they change according to circumstance and they change also spatially. So it's possible to write a smart contract for one ecosystem uh, and, and, and to build in certain conditions. For example, uh, they might have a drought uh, and if there's a drought, then maybe they're allowed to use water in different ways than, than they would otherwise. Um, and and the, the ability of of writing smart contracts, I think is the absolute um, uh, killer app of blockchain, even above trust and transparency, uh, because it allows you this flexibility. And we know um, uh, one reason that I moved into this space is uh, I studied very heavily microinsurance uh, schemes that we have in Africa at the moment, uh, which is often run off mobile phone payment systems. So a farmer will uh, buy a, a micro insurance for his crop or for his animals, um, and, and then that, that will uh, pay out automatically according to the climatic uh, 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 conditions. And that is a really, really positive uh, uh, outcomes we've seen from that. Um, it, you lose a little bit of accuracy, but in terms of cost, it's, uh, it's quite uh, affordable. Uh, what we'd like to see, uh, which is very ambitious, is to get a, a billion uh, euros or equivalent into LIN, we call it LIN, uh, before 2030. Uh, obviously, in the early stage, we have to test uh, quite extensively, and uh, we, we need to work out exactly what are the operational pitfalls and what are the uh, what are the, the effects on the ecosystem of actually handing animal, animals this uh, money. Um, just a few key points. We want to build it on the next generation blockchain uh, and we really hope um, we could build it on ADA, uh, which is the uh, currency of Cardano. Um, the LIN is, as we said, is a digital wallet sent to the animal. Uh, this is a really important point. Uh, it's kind of like reverse life insurance concept. So uh, the, the value exists in the animal when the animal is alive, and then when the uh, animal dies, it's redistributed back into the fund and then and redistributed to another animal. Um, I really like the idea that, that local people get to see how much an animal is worth. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, money and value really do help to change human behavior in that way. Uh, as we spoke about, the, the idea is to, is to allow local communities to change their behavior uh, and be rewarded for that. Um, we talked about grazing of cattle, which is probably the biggest single problem uh, in terms of destruction of these other species, and then cutting down trees for charcoal, possibly poaching. Or, or lions are subject to poisoning, um, uh, and again, that's uh, related to tension with uh, cattle. Um, the idea in, in uh, as uh, Linnaeus matures, uh, if it can prove itself, um, is that this sovereign fund will invest locally in uh, other income streams. So it should be possible if you bought a thousand dollars worth of Linnaeus in three or four years time to imagine that over a long term you would have a, a low rate of return on that investment. It's obviously not 
going to be a high rate of return, but it should be a safe rate of return. And in that case, uh, Linnaeus is really uh, a prototype of a natural capital uh, product of which we're going to see a lot more. Um, one of the most interesting elements for me about Linnaeus is the idea that built into the value of it is the monitoring ability. One, one problem we have, and Ethiopia is a good example, but not the only example, is that we don't have enough money to send scientists out into the field, and they haven't been particularly efficient at counting animals or knowing where they are at any given time. Uh, and uh, Linnaeus will build in um, a new layer of uh, intelligence uh, into that, and we can imagine an uh, open source database um, for different regions, for example, Gambella may have a database in five years' time in which you know most of the major species, where they are at any given time, what is happening to them. Um, and, and this, obviously, I'm coming at this from an artificial intelligence point of view, and artificial intelligence is really, really critical for that. Um, and we talk about a convergence of blockchain with artificial intelligence. I think this is one of the most interesting uh, elements for me. So uh, this is a cheap monitor which is now available for $12. It has a, a Raspberry Pi uh, computer built into it and you can hook it up in a, in a wild area and then download the data off uh, uh, Bluetooth at a later date. Um, uh, one of the most interesting uh, points uh, is machine vision. So now we are developing drone technologies and satellite technologies which will allow you to, to track uh, and to, to monitor animals in ways that have not been possible before. And of course, when we talk about local community, there's a lot of stuff, interesting stuff that can be done uh, using uh, smartphones. Um, you can distribute uh, smartphones in the community. They can take photographs, gather data, and so on. This is something which just came out last month. Um, this is, th these are uh, primates um, who have been thermally imaged from a, a low orbit satellite. Uh, and you can actually identify the, the species of uh, monkey just uh, from that data. So we are in a position to, to move to a much higher level of resolution, but the question, of course, is about money and how you finance that. And uh, we think Linnaeus might be a way to do that. Um, uh, in terms of partnerships, uh, we'd love uh, a minister to, uh, to partner with the government of Ethiopia uh, in the early stage. Um, so we, we, we run a couple of pilot projects and really try and understand uh, the complexity of, of the challenge. Uh, obviously, in the, in, in, in the, in the first few years, um, probably for the first decade, you're gonna be working mainly with major conservation groups who've had a 50, 60 year history on the ground, working with local communities, and essentially become a finance and intelligence mechanism for them to do their work. Uh, we have already very strong cooperation in the artificial intelligence industry. I actually think the insurance industry is going to be one of the very big players in this space. And I do think the applications that we develop here will have direct crossover to the livestock industry. Uh, so I think uh, for Ethiopia, obviously, livestock is a, is a huge industry. Um, then, uh, as uh, Charles uh, has developed very well, um, the uh, connections with universities um, is quite critical and having peer-reviewed work uh, which is very open source, very transparent. Um, I'm just going to click now to the uh, just a couple of points. I mean, um, my previous life before I worked in technology, I was the Africa correspondent for The Economist. So I have a lot of experience on the ground in Africa. And what I really love most of all yeah, this is a Samburu tribesman in Kenya. I love most of all connecting the very most advanced technology in the world uh, with the absolute ground level and thinking in a very realistic way uh, in terms of those communities, their education level, their income, 
and that is available to them, the challenges they have in their life, and thinking about what are the opportunities for them. And uh, so I think this is really ground truth. Um, this, I think, is uh, just a point uh, to, to end on, maybe. Um, the reason I'm on this stage right now and having this conversation about blockchain was that when I arrived in Africa, uh, most of the stories I initially wrote were about this Kalashnikov. And then in 2002, 2003, this Nokia 1100 phone arrived. And it was known as the Kalashnikov of communications in Africa. And I remember really profoundly um, having uh, discussions with development actors, um, with uh, African governments, who said that there is no chance whatsoever that ordinary Africans would have access to a mobile phone. That would never happen. And they would say things like, well, you know, the village, uh, it, it, how would they take care of the mobile phone mast? Who would pay for that? How would that network work? And what we've seen is uh, that they have underestimated the power of new technology by 20 to 50 fold. Um, and I think it's exactly the same situation we're in with blockchain right now. People are finding it very hard and difficult to see how it will become operational. It's never going to work for poor people, but I think uh, exactly it can and it will. So thank you very much.